Phoenix Force is the deck I've used to dominate in Marvel Snap. Double digit conquest borders, countless infinite climbs, a personal best infinite rank of 788 in global and 270 in the Americas. Time to share the secrets. Phoenix Force is how I got my start on YouTube. It's also how I kind of gained a tiny bit of popularity in the Reddit space in Marvel Snap. My version of Phoenix Force has two tech cards almost at all times. That is what sets it apart from other Phoenix Force decks. So it gives you a variety of different ways to pull off some pretty awkward wins that you can't otherwise pull off. Big Bad Eliath is the first of those tech cards. It allows you to, of course, shut down these crazy combos when people think they can go over the top of your crazy combo. And Shang-Chi, who can be paired with Carnage on the last turn to take out a big target and spread a bunch of Nimrods around, or just to pull off one of those awkward wins I referred to a few seconds ago. Nimrod is our plan B, or sometimes even plan A. When combined with Shuri, Nimrod bumps up to 12 power. You spread that Nimrod around with double destroy with a Deathlock, Venom, or Carnage. Ghost Allows you to juke your opponent on the last turn of the game if you have Carnage and one of the other two three cost destroy cards in Venom or Deathlock. Nico just has some weird good utility. Her destroy and draw two card spell is just absolutely fantastic in this deck and also if you destroy her with her double spell double power spell you can now resurrect her with phoenix force if you're sure your opponent doesn't have killmonger or some kind of tech so you're playing against a discard player or something like that and not to leave out the cards that phoenix force resurrects first we have multiple man and then dagger the reason why i do not have human torch in this deck is because human torch is super vulnerable to all kinds of tech. And that includes, of course, Killmonger, who is pretty popular. He is in Sarah control decks. He is, of course, in destroy decks. So I don't want that liability in Human Torch. And Dagger can just get big enough. I don't need 80 points of power in the lane. I can win with 20 plus. Okay, first up we have Squeak. Death's Domain is kind of nice for this deck. They have eight cards in their deck. They are a highly ranked player. Let's see if I can't take them down a notch. Still nothing to do, but that is nothing to worry about. They are Bounce, very obviously, with the Bishop. I could throw the dagger into Death's Domain now. I could save it for the last turn. I do have a Lyoth, though, for the last turn. So I will throw dagger into Death's Domain, just in case I draw into Phoenix Force. I could also... Uh -oh. Okay. That is okay. I can also play Shuri down into Death's Domain, but that would require me drawing into... What's his face? Nimrod. A Misery. And we draw... Phoenix Force! So... I play Phoenix Force here, move her here, and then move her back here. I will snap into this. Again, I have an Eliath. I also have a ghost spider to pull something into death's domain like and subscribe so Victory. this is the breaks of playing a high-ranked player my snap on turn four is telling them hey I have Phoenix Force and my dagger is just gonna move all around and solo a lane so you better win tiebreaker but also I can still get into death's domain if I wanted to if I draw into Nimrod, I play him into Death's Domain. I have an Eliath. I was just super well positioned. So just take the cube. If you're lucky, they'll give you two. But take the one when you have it. Okay, next up we have Hand Rick. Disc Tower. So that means... So that means Ghost Spider is off the table. We are going up against Mill. Therefore, Phoenix Force is off the table. 
Unless I 50-50 it. But we will play multiple man down here. Just in case. Maybe I do decide to 50-50. I will... I'm so tempted to stay here. I'm gonna stay through the snap. With Death's Domain and Nimrod, if this pulls back my Phoenix Force, that's not... Oh. Okay, so now how many cards have been destroyed? Three? <laughs> Where is Shuri? Show me Shuri. No Shuri for me. Who has been destroyed? Multiple Man, Deathlock, and Ghost Spider. So let's just YOLO. Because I was staying in because of Nimrod anyway. Maybe I can get a Shuri here. I do. So if this, through some stroke of madness slash genius, resurrects multiple man, dagger it is. So, I snap. <laughs> I definitely snap. Because I can play Nimrod here. I will move the dagger here. They're not gonna play into Vibranium Mines, are they? I'm gonna do the unexpected and leave dagger. See where this goes. I do have Eliath. Yeah, so I'm going unexpected because they expect me to move dagger into Vibranium Mines. And I don't wanna expose myself to potential tech. Okay, they didn't. So who has priority? They have priority. I need to be a little careful probably. So let me not move it again. Let me not move it again. I'm going to sacrifice. They have priority. So Sean just takes me out here anyway so that's fine let's get more power let's get more power to the venom okay there we go so they they drew their ideal line they were very confident clearly which is why they snapped again the reason why i didn't leave is because I was always going to play Nimrod into Death's Domain. They are thinning my deck. I will never be a big believer in mill decks. Sure, it can work, but you are thinning somebody's deck. And they already have cards in their hand, and you're just helping them potentially draw into the cards they need. And I mean, that didn't exactly what, isn't exactly what happened here, but that has played out when I played against Mill using this deck. The large dagger, they were just afraid. They had no tech, clearly. So they were just afraid of it being able to win middle. They can't get into Death's Domain. I clearly can with a Nimrod because I have a Nimrod I can destroy and get the Nimrod back in Death's Domain. I can move the dagger there. So I was just super well positioned. That is why I snapped on turn after dagger resurrected so on turn five i snapped after turn four and that is how you handle mill okay next up we have zubaba i have drawn okay so far for an opening hand pretty good they have 14 cards in their deck on turn one that is thanos Discard Thanos? Oh, what a uh, spicy. Yeah, it's in their deck. Huh. <laughs> okay. Get multiple man down here. If I don't end up destroying him, he goes up to five. I can drag him to New York. And this is also maybe where you snap just to scare them before showing them the rest of your deck. Uh, this multiple man is going to be annoying. 
Do I destroy it now? Eh, who cares. I'll snap. I'll pretend like I'm a move deck. Which I might actually be, because I have Dagger and Ghost Spider in hand as well. With Ghost Spider, also, I... What deck is this? There's Nimrod. So I will play Shuri here. I will play Nimrod. Left, of course. This must be a some kind of buff Thanos deck. Nimrod here. Hopefully, one of my cards does not get pulled to Great Web. Oh, I was going to say, are they really going to fill? They are not. Is this enough to gain priority? I guess it depends what gets moved. All systems go. One of their broods, maybe? Perfect. Well, not perfect, because I don't have priority, but... So, what I'm going to do to be unexpected is I will drag the Nimrod here, just for fun. I will go spider it over here. I will play a Venom here. Oh yeah, I can also move multiple, man. I think this is right. And then... Dagger over here? Am I leaving enough space? <laughs> well, I guess I can plan it out because moves don't trigger are trigger before now, no matter the order you play them. So I definitely have to play Ghost Spider first to move the Nimrod. And pull it... Okay, so that's filled. This has one... No, it does... Yes, it does have one spot, because the Nimrod's getting bounced back there anyway. And then I can pull these two middle. Eesh. Okay. So, let us see. Thanos there. I think we pull this off. <laughs> well, there's another good application of Ghost Spider. Because... So I think we... We should win no matter what gets pulled. Yes. Okay. No matter what got pulled, we won because we were winning all three lanes anyway. We are going up against a very interesting and curious deck. They're a high-ranked player, so they are just playing off meta. I can, I can dig it. Okay, round two. Uh, the, the RNG was heavily in my favor. I will play like a... Normal, serious person. <laughs> In Conquest, most of the time if somebody snaps, I'll snap right back because I do not care. Dagger and Ghost Spider. Let's continue to hold. If this is somewhat of a junk deck, uh, let's get down Nico. Two Nikos. While her double has been activated. Please don't eliminate Sinister London. Please don't eliminate Sinister London. Please. <laughs> Please. This is why Eliath is in the deck. Just flat out, this is why Eliath is in the deck. Get Shuri down here. And they do not want priority, so they're just probably going to walk straight into eating this Eliath. I have no ongoing cards. We are snapping right back because I have a Nimrod. I almost assuredly keep priority. Another version of this deck has a Enchantress in it instead of Eliath. Okay. I am. Ay, ay, ay. 
I, I don't have priority. I am. By I one am. point. <laughs> <laughs> by one stinking point you had one job this is why Elioth is here they they why did they play their flipped Iron Man that is an interesting play so yeah the other version of this deck that I have has Enchantress instead of Elioth and this is why because this is an ongoing based version they're, they may end up playing Mystique. Yeah, if they play Mystique, it's game over. They've destroyed nothing. I'm not going to be able to Sean anything. Oof. I needed priority. Okay. On to the next one. Okay, next up we have Sweezy. Lake Hellas. You always get down Nico with her Destroy 2. Well, not always. It depends on what turn, of course, but especially if it's an early turn. Even if you're off curve, if you have to play her on two or three to destroy the card you need destroyed. Another cool line you can do, especially if this were, say, Project Pegasus, the one that gives plus five energy, is to destroy the Nimrod and bring that back with Phoenix Force. Now you have Shang-Chi proof cards, essentially. And maybe that's what I do anyway, especially if I draw into Carnage. Let's let that Red Hulk get nice and beefy. I did draw into Carnage. Let's see what... Ah, Gladiator. Well, I guess either works. Well, let's see. I mean, I have to play Nimrod middle. Do I gain priority? I gain priority if... Or I don't gain priority if they play... What's his face? Annihilus. Oh, hold. They did not play Annihilus. So is it a last turn Annihilus? I have priority, so it could very well be a last turn of Nihilus. And if it is, and with a demon, do I go the fancy Phoenix Force Carnage? Oh, uh, no I don't because it's a 50-50 between Dagger and Nimrod. So I don't want to do that. I want to throw a lane. Carnage here. Pull the Carnage. And go this way? Did I do this right? <laughs> if it's six, that's 14? No, because of the Annihilus. <laughs> oh, that was. Oh, they probably didn't draw Nihilus, and I was expecting potentially more power. Or I didn't have time to. Th you saw me not clearly not have the time to think it through. Maybe positioning all of this over here was dumb. I should have positioned all of it over here, all of the Nimrods which was possible and thrown left, but I, I didn't have time to properly think it through. And we were able to put just enough points on the board. Okay, next up we have Ajasu, Kazumtite. Subterranea is the worst for combo decks. They have a discard avatar. They have 12 cards in their deck. What is that? Subterranea. Is that Thanos? No, you dummy. Yes. No? <laughs> I'm confused. Is it some kind of weird Agatha deck? 
No, they have four in hand. Okay, I guess I guess I'll find out. I hate you and your channel. Uh, dagger middle is fine. Yes, this card it is. Limbo. The rock is just. Uh, I will hold. Okay, they're gonna get it anyway. Uh, well, with Limbo, I can actually do the... Jeez, you got enough power in that lane, buddy? <laughs> with the Limbo, I can actually do the uh, destroy and resurrect it with Phoenix Force. And next turn, I can do exactly that with the Carnage and Phoenix Force on the same turn. They have a ton of extra energy. So I am at a pretty big disadvantage. Subterranea, I imagine, messed them up a touch too. And middle is of course the lane we abandon. How many rocks have I drawn? Just two, okay. I still won't snap because I am drawing horribly. I will play Phoenix Force middle. I can always move that. Or do I want priority? Eh, who cares? I have both Eliath and Sean. I will... I will stick through that. Well, maybe I... They don't have tech. So I'll play the Phoenix Force out here. And see if I can't snatch priority. You won't need this. Their Apocalypse is 16. Now I do not want priority. <laughs> yes, I definitely do not want priority because I could have shawned. But what do they have in their hand? Just an Apocalypse. And whatever they drew. Do I stick this out? Like, do they play the Apocalypse? These are... That's at 8, so that's no good. They move the Meek left and play the Apocalypse right? So then, if that's the case, I do this. No, I guess I should turn a rock. This, this, this. I mean, it's just a guess. Let's see how good I am at uh, reading. Because my deck is unpredictable too, what I want to do. Ooh. Okay, we both went with unpredictable lines. <laughs> and I think I got just enough. Yeah. I am Apocalypse. Okay, I... Uh-oh. How many points does me gain? <laughs> Just enough is right. So I was expecting the meat to go left so they would at least be able to challenge those lanes, but when players see a Nimrod on the board, they know that power is just gonna spread all over the place. So instead they just opted. I disagree with this line, by the way, that my opponent went down. 51 middle is completely unnecessary. So you, even if it's not Meek you move left, you at least play the Moon Knight left. Just get a couple of points in case I do something dumb. But that's why if I were them, I would have moved the Meek left or played the Apoc Apocalypse left and abandoned middle because they clearly would have won middle anyway because I abandoned middle. And you can do that with a Dracula on the board. It scares your opponent. But, but by moving Meek left, they forced me to play for all three lanes, but they didn't. So they couldn't have played the Apocalypse right, because that's how I read it. I thought they were going to move the Meek left. But ultimately, I was able to just barely escape. Okay, next up we have Dina of Gothic Lemons. They got my Venom. And we get the ability to nuke our hand. 
So can Nico show me her destroy too on turn two? No, she cannot. So instead we will just play out the multiple man. I will, what are you discarding? Scorn, so you gain priority, that's no problem. With this deck, you continue on the lines. Uh, it would have been so nice to have that over on the right lane. I think I will play Nico instead. Do I? No, because I can fit both of them in this turn. So let's do this instead. So I get my destroy. That is going to be one large scorn. I get my destroy off and I get Nico to double. Uh, this is where Shang-Chi comes to shine. Get the Shuri off here. See what I draw into. Hmm. I do not want priority. Not at all. Because I would love to take out that Scorn. But I probably will have priority here. That's funny. Maybe I should just play Modoc down. <laughs> there is Phoenix Forest. Is that good enough? Yeah, sure. Ooh, I can also drag it? Boy, they got scared quick. <laughs> Their game plan was really working. What I was going to do is get Phoenix Force down now. Then I would have had a choice. This would have been a... Uh, my multiple man was five because of Wakandan Embassy. Phoenix Force gets the Shuri buff first. So 10, 15. So I would have had 15 power multiple men. I could have played Venom. Like, moved the Phoenix, the multiple men around a little, but leave enough space, and then play Venom. And then that is a 20 power Venom, or more, whatever it is. And then you, you take that 20 plus power Venom and put him in another lane, and now he eats even more. Eliath was also there, or I just spread around the multiple men, and then do the Eliath line to stop any other, uh, like maybe a Mobius coming down as well since they've had all these discards. But because of that, I was super well positioned. I snapped as early as I could once I drew Phoenix Force and take my winnings. This is the most up-to-date version of the Phoenix Force deck that I'm using. I still revisit this deck from time to time. Again, I've been using this for months. You can go and look at my Reddit post history and you can see the first post I made with this seven eight nine months ago maybe i'm not bothering to look it up but it was it was a while ago and i've been using it in every meta it got me through hella metas it's gotten me through junk metas it's gotten me through all of them and some have been more annoying than others the professor x meta was not great <laughs> it stopped movement now it doesn't of course so who cares back when it stopped cards from being moved then yeah it just kind of hurt this deck especially because it hurt both lines it hurt the nimrod line and it hurt the phoenix force line but still i was able to weather the storm and i again use this deck to great success and i'm a big believer in it you will lose a lot but you can offset that with cube gains understand that's the type of deck it is it's not for everybody you need to be good with snapping and retreating and managing your cubes but if you are then i of course, highly recommend this deck. It's helped me achieve everything in the game that I've wanted to achieve. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. I appreciate all of you. I will either maybe have a blooper or a uh, bonus clip or highlights. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. Or maybe I just end the video.